Let's talk to some wonderful people. Our next segment uh, is going to recognise outstanding Australians, and there's plenty of them, and the contribution that some of these individuals make towards making the whole nation a far better place. Uh, I'd like to ask the Commonwealth Bank head on show to come up here and have a bit of a chat. Now, Commonwealth Bank are the major sponsor of today's event. Um, we'll get Mr Craig Brook up here. He's the Regional General Manager for South Australia and Northern Territory as well. Let's give Craig a round of applause. Thank you, Cosy. His Excellency, Hugh Van Lay, Governor of South Australia, and his wife, Mrs Lanlay, welcome. Adriana Christopoulos, Chair of the Australia Day Council of South Australia, welcome. Russell Wortley, President of, this, of the Legislative Council of South Australia, welcome. And MP, Dana Wortley. Lord Mayor of Adelaide, Martin Hazy, and his wife, Lady Genevieve, welcome. Distinguished guests, Ladies and gentlemen, first and foremost, wow, how good was Shanaka? Let's give him another round of applause. <laughs> I, I've got to say, I've never heard Melbourne and orderly in the same sentence before, ever. Adelaide and orderly, yes. Melbourne and orderly, no. Thank you for having me here today. And I've got a, a very privileged joint role that I play here, other than the regional general manager at the Commonwealth Bank. I'm also a very proud board member of the Australia Day Council of South Australia who do an amazing job. So to the board and Matt Miles and your team, congratulations on another great event so far again today. Well done. As was mentioned in my introduction, this segment will highlight the achievements of some amazing Australians who make contributions to the community that make this great nation an even better one. And the Commonwealth Bank's vision is to excel at securing and enhancing the financial well-being of people, businesses and communities. And I'll talk about that in a moment. But when Cozzy said before there was $5,000 en on envelopes on everyone's table, I didn't believe that. Who uses cash these days? Anyway, I didn't quite believe it. Today we'll focus on one of the programs and most importantly, the individuals involved. The Australian of the Year Awards which the Commonwealth Bank has been supporting for 35 years now, are the preeminent recognition program in the country. It's my pleasure to introduce the segment which will provide the opportunity to hear from South Australians of the Year recipients. In their own ways, they're inspiring Australians who have challenged our society to be a better one, combined with amazing endeavour and work ethic to make a difference. Before I hand over to Cozzy to interview Dr John Greenwood, who is the current Australian of the Year for South Australia, Monica Oliphant, the Senior Australian of the Year for South Australia, Armin Abrahimzadar, South Australia's local, sorry, Young Australian of the Year, and Claire Ford, South Australia's local hero. I'd like to wish all of our finalists all the best representing South Australia at the announcement of the Australian of the Year Awards in Canberra on the eve of Australia Day. Here's a short video that will highlight their achievements before we move on to the Q&A with the finalists. Each year, four remarkable South Australians are chosen across four categories as nominees for the National Australian of the Year Awards. Stillbirth is a devastation that I feel that no family should have to endure. You are your baby's only advocate and your baby can speak through you. Give them a voice and help prevent stillbirth. We didn't want another family to go through and experience what we experienced. Domestic violence is just like a disease or an illness. Would you wait for an illness to take over or would you try to prevent it? When I first started, we were more or less regarded as the tree hugger type. Now it definitely is mainstream and there's still lots to do. The idea of creating something that can help not just people in Adelaide, but people everywhere um, is really compelling. Be watching at 7.30pm on January 25th to see who will be the Australians of the Year for 2016. Well, I think we deserve to give them a round of applause for the four of my special guests up here on stage. It is a fair lineup. We've got uh, the burn surgeon, uh, John Greenwood. He spent a career easing the pain of burns victims. Dr. Greenwood was named uh, South Australia's Australian of the Year 2016. What an amazing title to have. We've also got Aman here. Aman's uh, up the end there. Aman Abrahizadar, if I got the name kind of right. Close enough. Uh, 
He, he's done a tireless effort with um, work against domestic violence, which you saw up on screen a minute ago. Miss Monica Oliphant here uh, was named South Australia's Senior uh, South Australian of the Year for her work in science and sustainability. Congratulations. And we've got uh, South Australia's local hero up the end, Claire Ford. She established uh, Still Aware, which supports families uh, and raises awareness about stillborns here in Australia. So we're going to have a bit of a, a chat to them. John, we'll start with you. I mean, what's it like to be up here and, and to be receiving these sorts of honours? Um, well, it's, it's obviously absolutely fantastic. It, it's, it's amazing that anybody even thinks about um, the work that you're doing being good enough to, to nominate you in the first place. But to actually get through and become a finalist and then win um, those finals for South Australia in the year was just amazing. And, um, you know, it's, it's however it ends, it's, it's just a, a fantastic milestone. And mate, we've had some tragedies here in South Australia, you know, over the last couple of years, the Pinery fires and, and even going back to the, the Bali bombings. And these are the sorts of people that you deal with in the, in the Burns game. A Burns injury is just like so horrific. What's it like working with people that have been injured at that level and, and getting them back to good health? Um, well, the main thing that most people fail to realise about burn injury is that burn injury is not just about skin. Burn injury uh, involves an evolving pathophysiological response that is different from any other form of trauma. So from minute to minute, you're dealing with a different pathology. Um, and that was, that's what makes burns so challenging. And, and the, the fact that you're, the organ that we deal with, the skin, is the most obvious and, and cosmetically most important and functionally most important organ that we, that we have, in my opinion. But, you know, I'm a skin specialist. So, um, so just dealing with people, bringing them back from from the brink um, and, I, and I have to say that Adelaide uh, enjoys the lowest mortality rate in the world for burn injury at the moment so we're doing a, we're doing a pretty good job and what, what do you put that down to is that an, an education thing or is that the why why do we have the last you think it's a, a mixture of uh, aggression um, and and just excellent care from from everybody that's involved because you know people single out the burn surgeon, but there's an enormous team that's involved in, in burns, not only uh, burns practitioners, burns nurses, and, and everybody around the burn area, but also the intensive care unit, the casualty way that we, that we deal with burns. And then we've also put plans in place to um, optimize patients who are coming from rural areas, so even pa patients who are traveling up to a thousand kilometers um, get the best care where they are, and that gives me the best chance of getting them a good outcome. You've dealt with so many um, patients over the years. Is there a standout here in South Australia that, that, that was just a remarkable success story from your end? No, there are, there are several people who really make a, a big impression on me. Obviously, obviously um, Julian Burton has become um, not only a, a, a partner, a friend, business partner of mine, but he's also a, you know, a really good example of somebody who's taken the adversity of a burn injury and and try to give something back to the people who looked after him. Um, there are people, and, and again, it does tend to be people from major incidents. Um, a guy called Wayne Griffiths, who had a horrendous time after the Air Peninsula fires in 2005, where he lost his wife and two small grandchildren, you know, and, and himself sustained horrible injuries. I mean, these, these people come back, and, and they're just the nicest, nicest people you could ever, ever hope to meet. And I'm, you know, I count... I count a large proportion of my patients amongst my friends. Well done, mate. Round of applause, please. I'm pretty proud to call you a South Australian. Thank you so much. Next up, we've got Monica. Now, Monica, is it true you're descri described as a, a tree hugger even back in the days when tree huggers weren't cool? Nowadays, they're pretty cool. Is that what you describe yourself as? Uh, not anymore, no. <laughs> I'm a mainstream worker in uh, renewable energy, which is great. Well, tell us a little bit about your history and tell us about where you've come from. Well, I can remember the day virtually that I decided I'd like to go into renewable energy. It was uh, the time of the, one of the Middle East uh, or, uh, wars in the uh, uh, early 1970s, and uh, there was the oil embargo. And I was sit standing washing the dishes, and Sir McFarlane Burnett, a uh, laureate in uh, a medicine, came on and said, if we had uh, solar energy, then we wouldn't have to fight over oil. And I thought, yes, that's the way I would like to go, a uh, renewable energy uh, 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 social way. 
Well, it's interesting where we sit now with, uh, with oil. I mean, oil is under $30 a barrel and it's causing yes. huge problems in the Middle East and Russia yes. and yes. America, shale, it's, it's all gone terrible, as have my Santos shares. Oh, my God. Yes. Um, Jeez, I think I'm going to be homeschooling, homeschooling the kids when they hit high school. But, I mean, yeah. what, what do you feel? What's the, what's the long-term future for oil? Some are saying it's the end. Some are saying it will rebound. Well, uh, we say that, that uh, peak oil has been reached or it's been nearly reached and we're always finding more. However, my belief is that we should be using, saving our oil for uh, more uh, uh, petrochemicals, nylons and so on and using, of course, renewables for, uh, in their stead and saving uh, the oil for other options. And what does it mean to you to be up here and to be selected and chosen for this award? Uh, for me, it is uh, uh, an indication that uh, uh, renewable energy has uh, reached its, uh, uh, become the mainstream and that people uh, are using it more. And I'm really proud, and I go around the world spruiking it, that uh, South Australia has 41% of uh, its electricity is from intermittent renewables. Not uh, sort of hydro, but intermittent wind and solar. It's pretty special. We're about the second highest in the world. Fantastic. Very good. Yeah, round of applause worthy. Yes. And finally, Monica, the surname Oliphant is a very famous name here in South Australia. Are you yes. related back to them? Yes. Uh, Sir Mark was my father-in-law. So that was good. He was a really nice and very clever man. Yeah. Uh, and I learned a lot to say my mind. And uh, uh, yeah, he was a good role model. Well, once again, congratulations, Monica. Thank well you. done. You're very, your state's very proud of you, and we appreciate your efforts here in South Australia. <laughs> Next up, we've got Aman. Uh, Aman's interesting because he's made a, a, such a, a footprint in the, the world of domestic violence, um, yet I found out he's in the building industry. So I was very interested, and that's maybe my first question, mate. You're in the building industry. How did you become involved in um, being an advocate for, or be, being a representative for domestic violence and doing work there? Uh, well, I guess... Um, uh I uh, fell into this um, space, um, I guess, by default. I grew up with uh, domestic violence. It was something that was, uh, that was normal in my household, and uh, unfortunately, it uh, cost uh, my mother her life. So um, um, that's, uh, that's how I've been involved, and um, I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. And what's the future for you, mate? What, what do you hope to do in the next two or three years? Well, uh, I guess there's only so much that, um, that the government can do in terms of... Uh, new initiatives in terms of funding. Uh, what I want to do is uh, uh, try and uh, uh, tap into the corporate sector and tap into the community and uh, really have, uh, uh, I guess, you know, individuals, men especially, uh, a bit more involved in this space. And, and you, like you said, you witnessed it firsthand when you were a young fella. What would your advice be to people that, that are in that situation? You know, what would your advice be to you know, the females that maybe it's just starting or, or, or the signs? What would you say? Uh, I, I would say as soon as you see the signs to, um, to seek assistance, um, things uh, can only get worse. And, and again, I'm only speaking on, on my own experience, but uh, uh, once you do see the signs, it uh, really is just a matter of time and uh, it does uh, tend to escalate. So uh, there is assistance out there and it's important for people to know and uh, I uh, highly recommend that uh, people get assistance. Well done, mate. Wish you the best of luck in the future and congratulations on the award. Well done. Round of applause. Thank you. And finally, we've got Claire over here. Claire's up the ends. Now, um, Claire, you've got an amazing story. Um, maybe take us back through to the start of it. You actually taught me something um, when I was researching you that I wasn't aware that Australia still had um, 2,500, that there was 2,500 stillborn babies every year in Australia. That number's a lot higher than I thought. Yeah. Tell us about your involvement and your story. Well, Still Aware is exists to raise awareness to that fact um, and it wasn't until my husband and I uh, experienced it firsthand when our daughter Alfie was stillborn at term and we looked at her a healthy 40 week old baby and she was never going to wake up she was stillborn and should be with us today and looking back over the pregnancy I had a lot of signs that presented the fact that she was in distress, but I was never told to report on those things. So Still Aware exists to educate women, but not just women, the community as a whole, that stillbirth is actually an epidemic. Yes, globally, there's stillbirth, and we are not the, the highest ranking uh, country 
However, when you look at the first world countries, we're 16th. That's not great. One in every 135 pregnancies in Australia will end with stillbirth. That's too many and it's too great. And what we do know is that there is a level of preventable stillbirth. And if we were to reach uh, the uh, level of reductions, we haven't reduced stillbirth, by the way, over 20 years. It has plateaued. We're not doing enough about the cause. In fact, we're not doing anything. Um, but educating women to get to know their bodies and families to speak out about it will make change. Awareness will bring change. And mothers monitoring their movements in the third trimester has reduced stillbirth by up to 50% in some countries. And we can save a, very, very uh, conservatively 200 babies a year if we were to adopt those methods and make a continuity of care. We were talking before, it, it seemed to me that um, stillbirth was something maybe 15 years ago that seemed to be in the media a lot, like I, I seem to remember hearing a lot about it, yet really it seems to have tapered off. It, would that be a fair comment or, mm. or has it got the attention that it deserves throughout? Certainly not. I suppose um, if it had got the attention that it deserved, Alfie would be here. And that's the simple fact, that my daughter, our daughter, would be in our arms or actually probably running around this area. I wouldn't even be sitting on this stage if she was here. The only reason that I am here, and very thankful to be here, by the way, um, raising the level of, of validation for stillbirth in Australia, is because of her and because nobody else stood up and spoke out. Sure, there has been a level of uh, awareness, but a very, very minor level, and there's so much that needs to be done. And when Alfie was born, but born without breath, I looked and said, why didn't somebody tell me that this could happen? I thought it was a medieval thing. It isn't. It's happening here and now every day, every four hours in Australia. That's six babies every day that we could be working to save. And how can people get involved with Still Aware? Talk about it. You know, speak out. If you know somebody who's pregnant, somebody who wants to, to start um, a family, anybody, I think... It's not about the fear factor. It's not saying, oh, my goodness, stillbirth exists. Everybody should be frightened. It's about actually being educated and saying, stillbirth exists, but I can do something about this, and my baby can speak through me, and getting to know your baby in utero is key. So what can you do? You can talk and talk to the pregnant women around you, talk to your families and say, this is what we need to do. This is what you need to do. Get to know your baby. Speak up. Be empowered. And talk to your doctor and say, I want to be checked. I want to see how my baby's going in there. Well, well done. Thank you so much, Claire. Thanks for those thank words. You. And thank you so much to the four of you. And as we uh, pass the mic back along, Claire, we'll just get you to tell us, what, what, what are your plans for Australia Day? And, and what does it mean to you? And we'll pass along and find out what you guys are doing. We'll start with Claire. What, this year? Yeah. My plans for Australia Day? Very, very different. I'm, I'm going to be in Canberra. What would I normally be doing? Um, spending it with family. And thankfully, I'll get to spend it with new friends and um, raising awareness of stillbirth, which is something I never would have anticipated my Australia Day to be. But I'm very extremely thankful and, and humbled that I can do that. Aman, what's the normal Australia Day for you, mate? Oh, well, Australia has uh, beautiful beaches, so I'd be uh, um, walking, uh, walking down a beach uh, with the uh, beautiful uh, soft sands in between my toes and uh, loving life. Monica, what about you on a normal Australia day? Very, very similar to Aman. I'd be taking my dogs on a very long walk, going to the beach, or going on my wave ski, or being with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right, get the bikini out and get on the wave ski. Beautiful stuff. All right, what about you, Dr. John? Um, because of the um, Australian predilection on Australia day for barbecues and alcohol, mm -hmm. I would normally be at work. <laughs> okay, very good. Well, once again, can we please give them a massive round of applause?